China C919 aircraft, heavily promoted by the Chinese government as the first completely domestic plane, actually has poor quality and frequent issues. Most of its main parts come from the U.S., and it hasn't received airworthiness certificates from Europe or the U.S. Recently, Vietnam Airlines faced a shortage of planes due to engine maintenance problems, causing a spike in domestic ticket prices. During a shareholders meeting, shareholders asked if Vietnam Airlines would consider buying the C919 to address the shortage. According to Vietnam News, CEO Le Hong Ha said that they're closely watching the C919's progress in obtaining global airworthiness certification. Currently, only Chinese authorities have certified it, suggesting Vietnam Airlines is not considering purchasing the C919 yet. The process of obtaining international certification for the C919 seems to have made progress, according to a Voice of America report on June 28. European technicians and aviation officials will visit China in July to inspect the C919 and continue the certification process. Officials from the European Aviation Safety Agency will participate in flight simulation tests, meet with the design team, and talk with their counterparts from the Civil Aviation Administration of China (CAAC). The European delegation will have ample opportunities for detailed inspections, boarding the aircraft for close observation, and visiting the assembly line of the manufacturer, Comac. However, this development has raised concerns among some experts about potential threats to the European aviation industry. Italian China expert. Francesco Sischi noted that inspection and verification are important steps, but he doubts it will lead to the EU buying Chinese planes. Sischi believes that with EU certification, these planes would be sold to other developing countries like those in Africa or Latin America, where they would compete with Boeing and Airbus. China adviser at the International Crisis Group Liao Zhihao also thinks that China is trying to use European standards and certifications to enter markets in the Middle East, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia. He highlights the threat, saying, "Comac and the China Aviation Industry Corporation are essentially the same, with the latter being at the core of communist aircraft development. They should be seen as national organizations rather than private companies. We need to deepen our understanding of the Chinese government's commercial governance model." Dr. Sari Aro Aren, a senior researcher at the Royal United Services Institute (RUSI) in Brussels, pointed out that it will take a long time for Comac to become a company comparable to Airbus and Boeing. Dr. Aren explained, "To achieve self-sufficiency in the aviation sector, China must localize technology, including the aviation industry." One of the goals is to master airworthiness standards, identified as one of the 35 core technologies. However, China heavily relies on the West for these technologies. She noted that China still depends significantly on Western components, especially advanced technologies like engines and aviation control systems. Many of these critical parts are imported from France, the U.S., and Germany. This reliance on foreign technology poses a geopolitical risk, as obtaining licenses and certifications from abroad could be hindered by deteriorating geopolitical situations. Dr. Avren stated that expanding internationally is a long journey for Comac. They not only need licenses and regulatory approvals, but also need to establish service centers. China might use diplomatic pressure and direct investments to open markets outside the West, such as including aviation-related terms and bilateral agreements. However, Western export controls could make it more challenging for China to acquire key technologies. Some cases have shown that the Chinese government has tried to obtain the technology it depends on from Western suppliers, which could lead to increased cyber attacks on Western aviation intellectual property. The C919 project started in 2007 and took 16 years to complete. This single-aisle jet, produced by Comac, is China's first large domestically made passenger aircraft. It symbolizes Beijing's broader "Made in China" strategy, aiming to reduce dependence on foreign manufacturers. The first C919 was delivered to China Eastern Airlines at the end of 2022 and began 100 hours of verification flights on February 1st last year. However, the next morning, after flying from Shanghai Hongqiao Airport to Beijing Daxing Airport, the left engine's thrust reverser. Failed, causing the subsequent verification flights to be cancelled. Despite this, China Eastern Airlines did not publicly comment or respond to the incident. 
According to Liberty Times, on May 28 last year, China Eastern conducted the first commercial flight of the C919, operating daily passenger flights between Shanghai Hongqiao Airport and Chengdu Tianfu Airport. However, after a month of operation, on the morning of June 29, the flight from Shanghai to Chengdu arrived at Tianfu Airport at 11:30 a.m., but could not return to Shanghai as planned. An Airbus A320 took over the task, and the C919 was temporarily. Grounded on July 1st, according to Yao Cheng, a former staff officer at the Chinese Navy headquarters now residing in the U.S., the C919's failure to return to Shanghai on time likely indicated a problem. Veteran aviation expert Gao Fei stated that the C919's hyped reputation does not match its safety record. He said that despite the Chinese media's praise, the C919 has faced ongoing safety and reliability concerns, both from its verification data and its first flights. The switch to an Airbus plane indicates a malfunction. The C919 is the first jetliner independently developed for China's civil aviation market, with China Eastern Airlines operating the only C919 currently in passenger service. Service. Considering that China Eastern operates the first C919 not for profit but for the Chinese government's reputation, this situation is unusual. He said that the C919 is assembled from components from various countries. There are still many questions about its integration, performance, maintenance process, and the supply of spare parts. If the plane is operated despite potential losses and safety risks just to boost its reputation, then there's a problem. Military commentator Yao Cheng, a former staff officer at the China Navy headquarters now living in the U.S., told Radio Free Asia that the C919's major components come from abroad, and any mismatch could cause issues. He also mentioned that the aircraft safety is not solely about the components; it also involves how well these parts work together. Yao further commented that the C919's failure to return to Shanghai as scheduled could be due to its sensitivity. Typically, passenger planes can fly as long as safety is not compromised, but any incident with the C919 could significantly impact China's aircraft manufacturing operation. In addition to frequent issues during commercial flights, the C919 heavily relies on U.S. components and technology, according to Bonnie Glaser, a senior advisor for Asia at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. The C919's key parts are mostly sourced from the U.S. Given the increasing U.S. awareness of China's using civil technology for military purposes, there are concerns that American-made aviation products might be used for China's military. In a report from late 2020, Scott Kennedy from CSIS wrote that calling the C919 a Chinese aircraft is misleading because almost all its parts, including those crucial for flight, are imported. Data from Airframer indicates that nearly 60% of the C919's primary suppliers are American companies, another third are European, and only 14 are Chinese, with half of those being joint ventures. These Chinese suppliers mostly provide less complex components like the fuselage and wings, which account for just 25% of the aircraft's total cost. Key components such as the engine, electronics, and flight control systems still rely on well-known international suppliers like General Electric from the U.S., Safran from France, and Lieber from Germany. Mainland China's Economic Daily reported that the most technically challenging and costly parts of aircraft manufacturing are the structural systems, engine system, and avionics system. The C919's engine is provided by CFM, a U.S.-French joint venture, and its avionics system is by Avic Lehua, another joint venture between China and the U.S. Besides these three major systems, many other parts and technologies are supplied by Sino-Foreign joint ventures, making the C919's domestic content rate about 60 percent. Professor at Tongji University's School of Aeronautics and Mechanics. And director of the Aircraft Engineering Research Institute, Shen Haijun, told Southern Metropolis Daily that the official figure for the C919's domestic content is around 60 percent. Despite this, most of the core components come from Europe and the U.S., particularly the Leap X1C turbofan engine, jointly developed by the U.S. and France. Amid the ongoing U.S.-China trade and technology wars, the C919 faces the risk of being choked off at any time. Director of the National Defense Strategy and Resources Research Institute at Taiwan's National Defense and Security Research Institute, Su Ziyun, said that the most critical part of an engine is its materials. While the design theories may not vary greatly, the key is the engine blades, which must withstand an extremely high temperatures and rotational speeds—a challenge that China has yet to overcome. 
Voice of America reported that the C919 aircraft heavily relies on foreign technology for critical systems like the power system, avionics, flight control systems, fuel system, power supply system, and landing gear. These components are either directly sourced from mature foreign products and technologies, or manufactured by joint ventures between China and foreign companies. China's domestic aviation industry mainly contributes to the design and manufacture of the fuselage, wings, tail, and interior parts. Scott Kennedy of the CSIS in Washington told Voice of America that he is pessimistic about the prospects of the C919 achieving full domestic production. Kennedy believes that the C919 is a Chinese aircraft in name only because the parts that enable it to fly are Western. The C919 supply chain should not be considered global, but rather Western, primarily American. Due to the inability to assess the most advanced technologies, the C919 lags significantly behind Western advanced aircraft in one crucial area: range. The Comac C919 is claimed to have a range of about 2,500 nautical miles, roughly one third less than that of the Airbus A320 Neo and Boeing 737 Max. The Chinese government has spared no expense in supporting the C919 large aircraft project, according to CSIS. The development, manufacturing, and other costs nine are estimated at 49 billion U.S. dollars. However, determining the exact amount is challenging due to the lack of transparency in Comac's financial situation. Overseas media reports indicate that more than 70 percent of the C919's components come from American and European manufacturers, with less than 20 percent being domestically produced. Even this 20 percent is achieved through technological cooperation with foreign partners. A respondent in a 2014 Rand report noted that once Chinese companies obtain the necessary technology from a foreign partner, they often discard these partners under the pretext that their technology or products do not comply with Chinese government regulations. This behavior demonstrates that the goal of China's industrial policy is to acquire technology by any means to enhance the competitiveness of its domestic industries. Despite this, Chinese companies have not mastered core aircraft technologies. Yang Yikui, an assistant researcher at Taiwan's National Defense and Security Research Institute, explained that Western companies have long entered joint ventures to gain access to the Chinese market. However, the transfer of critical technologies from Airbus and Boeing to Chinese hands through these joint ventures is not straightforward. For instance, CFM International, a joint venture between GE Aviation in the U.S. and Safran in France, proposed assembling the Leap 1C engines for the C919 in China. However, the deal fell through because Chinese authorities demanded more technical information about the design. The 2014 Rand report highlighted that the most advanced products, such as turbine blades, composite materials, and complete integrated systems, are tightly controlled by the companies that develop them. With most of these components manufactured overseas and imported to China for full assembly, this situation has led China to resort to its usual tactics of espionage. A 2019 report by the American cybersecurity company CrowdStrike detailed how the Chinese government uses underground hacker networks, Ministry of State security officials, company insiders, and state directives to fill gaps in critical technology and intelligence. This espionage effort has been instrumental in developing the turbine engine essential for the C919 to compete with Boeing and Airbus. In 2018, the Department of Justice issued a series of indictments revealing China's theft of key aircraft technologies. The Leap 1A's engine's composite material fan blade system, developed by CFM, was a specific target of Chinese espionage. GE experts highlight that the composite material fan blade system is unique to GE Aviation. This technology allows GE to produce lighter engines, enhancing fuel efficiency and engine size, enabling aircraft to carry more cargo and passengers. Currently, global airlines have limited choices when it comes to purchasing commercial aircraft. The global market for large civil aircraft is dominated by American Boeing and European Airbus. Industry experts point out that the C919 lacks competitiveness in the international market, primarily because its fuel efficiency does not match that of Boeing and Airbus aircraft, making it difficult to attract international buyers away from these two giants. Airbus has noted that while the C919 is expected to meet some domestic demand in China, Comac lacks the infrastructure and investment to pose a threat to the duopoly of Airbus and Boeing in the international market. Airbus stated that for broader market success, it needs an international sales team and a mature customer support network. In fact, it took Airbus about 40 years to achieve parity with American manufacturers. The tense relationship between the U.S. and China also makes it difficult for the C919 to gain a foothold in the international market. 
According to a CNN report, on February 19th, the increasing tension between Beijing and Washington could hinder Chinese commercial aircraft from finding a market in the West. Besides navigating technical challenges, Chinese aviation will have to navigate the global geopolitical situation as well.